Good day everyone, Alice here from Safi Financial Network. Today is April 4th, 2023. Here is S&P 500 daily chart. Market just had a down tick today, another follow through yesterday's session. So banking sectors, uh, um, they were leading the market in a downside. Volume was uh it was decent today so so far 94 million for spy which is s&p 500 etf all in all i'm just looking for um possibly another dip here to this area to 4000 area but that could be kind of like the bottom information i believe um, this sharp sell-off is not the crash or something like this so it's gonna just come, uh, come down here to this area and probably that would be the bottom information for the market for the next rally. And uh, this May could be another bottom information like March May, <clears throat> March bottom. And uh, this could be another um, uh, just initiation for the, for the next rally. So we'll see how it goes. But all in all, I'm just looking for a uh, buying opportunity here about lots of stocks, uh, to be honest, last two, three days. And we just accumulate more in our investment portfolio right now. Um, all subscribers uh, that they are in, in in my investment portfolio, they're just taking benefit of uh, my analysis, and we are just uh, getting back to long position in some stocks. We will get back to those ones, and I'm gonna just name some of them. And uh, all in all, and uh, market just uh, had a, like a, a nice downside. Um, and stochastic wise, we are in no man's land, just getting to the oversold condition probably next next day or so or early next week and tomorrow we will have nfb today we had apple earning which we will talk about it in a bit and uh, again right now just market is in a correction phase and when stochastic gets back to here to this area that's going to be uh, along with uh, stochastic rsi and also along with the uh, price action that could give us a nice buying opportunity for the next one so uh again i just want to confirm that we are in a bear market we are in a cycl uh, cyclical bear market uh sorry secular bear market but in a cyclical bull market so this bull market can stretch to here and if it goes above this level then probably i will change my analysis i'm not looking for all-time high for s p 500 i'm looking for kind of like a decent rally to the to the months of august so it can just happen uh, by second half of the may going to the june june again is going to be a choppy but after june bottom we could see a rally for july august to to this area so we'll see how it goes moving on to nasdaq uh, which is a technology index today nasdaq was pretty um uh, choppy and i should say doji bar just a if you look at the nasdaq chart so it's kind of like interesting because it, this one goes to here to this white range bar and right now we are at the middle of this white range bar we just got a sell signal from stochastic momentum so if this one goes down to here to the overbought condition over sorry oversold condition we can see this one is getting back to a bull reversal for now macd is kind of like a showing um, a bearish momentum so it's going to be continuation for the uh, for the downside if this one goes down here to this area i should say that's going to be the end of the corrective move i'm not sure even if it gets there here so because market just the digesting the correction phase in this consolidation so I, as you see here since march 31st nasdaq didn't go anywhere so nasdaq just doing sideways consolidation two days three days pop and then two weeks consolidation so it's kind of like a normal for nasdaq and when this consolidation breaks either way you see that's going to be a bigger move to the downside and then to the upside so i'm just looking for kind of like this so probably that's going to be the ideal scenario if nasdaq goes down to here to this area and then pop to the upside which would be fantastic uh, scenario for the nasdaq so we will see how it goes but right now technology wise techies big techies especially those fang names we will get in a bit they just beat the earnings and expectations and uh, and revenues so fantastic fundamental phase and technical as well so they just follow them uh, moving on to 
US 30, which is Dow Jones. So Dow Jones had a, like an ugly day due to a financial sectors. So financial sector just put pressure on the Dow. And unfortunately, we just stopped out for the first phase. But I, I'm looking for kind of like another dip. Probably the, tomorrow would be kind of like a buying opportunity. If it goes here, that would be, to be honest, a fantastic buying opportunity for Dow Jones. And I believe these financial sectors can outperform the market later on. And even energy as well. So looking for some kind of like a pullback, a deeper pullback here to this area. And then rally to the months of august something like this so we will see how it goes right now it's just forming a nice qm pattern and this qm pattern triggers uh when we get here so we're just waiting patiently to see if price gets to our level so that would be nice buying opportunity moving on to some individual names uh this is apple but uh, let's go st start with yield as usual and we will get to apple as well so here is my chart for the yield yield had a very very volatile day so it goes up here then coming down but again it just back test this broken trend line and i believe yield can do sideways here especially tomorrow is going to be nfp so no one knows what's going to be the number but if number is pretty hot so that's going to give federal reserve green light for another rate hike which i don't think so uh, probably the drop market is going to be uh, kind of like a neutral a number. And that would be kind of like uh, the green light for the Fed to hold on the interest rate, at least for now, or pause. And that's going to be a bearish signal for the yield. The yield is going to go down and it gives market uh, a, a signal that uh, Federal Reserve is going to pause and pivot later this year or probably 2024 they're going to pivot the market so we'll see how it goes for the rate but right now yield is is just uh, the forecast for the future of the interest rate and as we expect i don't care what federal reserve and jay powell says i do look at the chart and chart tells me that yield is going to go down fed is going to pivot the market later on due to recession so recession is coming fed is going to pivot and they're going to just bring down the interest rate to help out the, uh, well, uh, corporations and institutions as usual. This is the 100-year cycle that they're doing every single time when there is a recession. So, treasuries just that backtest this area again. So, uh, let's see if it can break out this area. Because if it breaks out this area, the 108 it's going to be the next level and then it can just uh, go off to the roof 120 is coming so we'll see this is again very very bullish pattern in overall probably short term bearish but very very bullish pattern in the monthly and weekly chart so we'll see how it goes gold had a, like a new all-time high then coming back down so yesterday after market close everyone just panicking and fearful about the uh, pacvest bank and the other banks just after hours go, uh, they went down crazy, like a 20%, 30%, even 50% for the uh, PacWest. And uh, gold just uh, spike up, just uh, when future market opened to the new all-time high, but seller just took control coming back down. However, this candle doesn't tell me that it's going to be bearish. Yeah, rejection is coming. Higher shadow on the top is coming, yes. But this candle, it doesn't tell us the rally is over. This tells me that this is just a pause for the next phase. So we'll see how it goes. I'm kind of like a bullish for the gold right now. It's kind of like a tricky to be bullish. But any pullback again to this area could be a buying opportunity. Crude, just a fantastic price action. On the other side, crude just to go to the lower low, 63.77, and then coming back up. So here is the level that we were talking about yesterday so yesterday when market closed here we were talking about this area and look what happened just touch 63.77 and then goes back up sharply and if this one holds and if this one goes above this pivotal point which is gonna be the end for the crude at least for now so we'll see how it goes vix pretty nice price action so vix just satisfy the target i should say vix satisfies the upside target exactly goes here the one that we marked on the chart i think two days ago or yesterday i'm not i can't remember but i just told you if vix break out this level it's gonna go all the way up to here and then coming back down so it happens sure enough and vix just are coming down 
However, it was 9%, 9.54% to the upside. Not a bad action for VIX. But still, I'm not looking for a spike. Another spike is coming for VIX. Dollar just get up strength a bit. So it goes up uh, 19 cents, uh, 101. And uh, right now, dollar is forming bearish consolidation here. So we will see how it goes. But if this one triggers to the downside, that could be pretty ugly for the dollar. It can go down to 97.99 and then 95.96 at the end of the day. Apple, which is kind of like uh, the rocket star today, just a boost up to here. After market Apple, right now it's uh, trading at uh, 169. So just before market close, it was at uh, 165, but earning and revenue was pretty good. And possibly the guidance is going to be a good as well. So market just... Uh, going all the way up so it depends on the it depends on the press conference but uh, right now apple is in rocket star three trillion dollar market cap company just that can give a market like a nasdaq s p and even dow jones boost to the higher price so we'll see how it goes we'll see how it's going to open tomorrow but this is definitely going to be a market holder and saver at this time Amazon, just the optic today, pretty uh, small optic today, so uh, 35 cents to the upside. Uh, nothing bad, nothing good. It's just a neutral position for Amazon. Google and uh, Meta is coming down, so Meta is kind of like heading down, possibly to this gap low here, at least to this level, which is going to be at 222. And we will see if it goes down there and stop there. So. All in all, I'm just looking for a downside for Meta to fill out this gap as a, like a buying opportunity again. Microsoft, a pretty nice uh, day. So not Microsoft, I know it's kind of like a looking the ugly one, just a top information, but it's forming like a consolidation. When it consolidates, it's going to go higher. So $1 up today, so not bad for Microsoft. Google, the same price action, $0.72. Cents. It's just forming a consolidation prior this supply area which is gonna be the bull signal for this area so we'll see how it goes but google i'm pretty positive on this i have position good allocation on google and i'm, and I'm gonna keep that one as well netflix just a dollar 48 cents up it's not that bad not good so it needs to go higher uh, break out this trend line to go higher for a bull pattern so right now it's just uh, forming kind of like a bullish consolidation just to pull back and hold up pretty well but if it goes down here to this area that could be kind of like the last trench for the bulls tesla 50 59 cents up today <clears throat> and uh, it's just forming the small bullish consolidation here we will see if this one fails here to the downside like a uh, clean out this pivotal point it can go down to here which is going to be a kind of like a good call option play for me SMH, which is a semiconductor index, it was like a doji bar and just after hours coming down just a bit. But right now, SMH doesn't go anywhere. So it's going to be choppy, sloppy here since I should say um, January. So semiconductors doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, some individual names, they had like a good move like NVIDIA, AMD, and uh, the rest is coming down. SOX. The same Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. This one two dollar twenty nine cents loss, and it doesn't go anywhere. TSM, which is seventy nine cents to the upside. So right now it's just forming the bearish consolidation for this level. If this one take out, this one can go down here to seventy seven to eighty dollar. AMD five dollar up. So AMD we just bought the pain yesterday. To be honest, I don't know what would be the reason for this move. Uh, probably some changes, some corrections, I don't know, in earning. But earning was pretty good. So people just uh, sell it off yesterday just because of the guidance for Q2. I don't know why, because guidance can change. No one can forecast the market for the future. But seems like market just got crazy yesterday. This just sold it off and we bought it. We bought it here and look what happened today. I didn't expect this move today but when this one goes above this pivotal point rejected coming down this is a bullish signal folks this is not a bearish signal especially when this uh, six percent upside move closing and uh, this tells me that um, probably bulls are coming back institution coming back this is a very very good level for buy i don't know why people just sold off until 
the closing bell yesterday. Nvidia $2.40 down today. All in all, it's just the down tick today and just uh, again touching this trend line. This is a dynamic trend line. And if it goes below this, if it goes below this pivotal point, that can be ugly going all the way down to here. So it's kind of like a very, very important level for Nvidia here. Right now, we are just touching this dynamic trend line. We can't say anymore. A Texas instrument, dollar five cents down. Lamb Research, and this one is down as well. So two dollar thirty one cents. Still, this one around four hundred forty four could be a buying opportunity. Moving on to the downside leader today, XLF, which is a financial ETF. This one goes down after market as well. So. Uh, very very sharp sell off today so it goes all the way down to here but rejected back up so we'll see how it goes KBE which is a big bank like a large cap bank ETF this one goes down but buyers just recommended back KRE which was pretty interesting but this one is coming back up exactly 32 to 34 level that I was mentioning so it's kind of like oversold I'm just looking for a bounce tomorrow or early next week because this one is in oversold condition right now so it doesn't mean that the banking problem has been resolved no it doesn't it's gonna continue but this one is oversold and we should see a natural reaction JP Morgan fantastic price action so it goes down to to this level which is kind of like a very, very interesting breakout level, 131. If you remember, we were stocking here, I told you, if it go above this, that's going to be spiky. If it goes below this, that's going to be spiky. Sure enough, we had a spike to the upside. Right now, we just back test this area. So very, very interesting level to see a rejection, and rejection is coming. So this needs to hold up pretty well. This is the best among the other banks and banking sector, and I do own share on this name as well. So the only name in JP, uh, in banking sector I have is JP Morgan. Moving on to the Goldman Sachs. Goldman, um, not a good price action. The other ones got a better shadow, but this one, well, you can say, yeah, there is a shadow, but it's not that strong. So the sellers took control on this one. Wells Fargo, 5% down today. So Wells Fargo, the same. It's not in a good shape. Citigroup, just a doji war, hammer. So it goes to the lower low, but coming back up sharply. So this is bullish signal. And if it goes below this 27.88, that could be ugly. But right now, it's just holding up pretty well. GDX, gold miners take out this pivotal point coming down along with gold but these ones to be honest just getting to this gap this consolidation break out to the upside i believe more consolidation here can go higher to the 41 so we will see gdxj the same price action happening so this one doesn't go above this high so still this supply area works but it, if this one goes above this breakout this can go all the way up to here to 50 level aem which is agnico eagle so this one take out this pivotal point pretty nice price action new month which we own it and uh, this one fantastic move to the upside we just accumulate more last week and right now to be honest it's one of the best setup that i can see here so if we get above this that can go all the way up to 62. Yeah, for sure. There are lots of resistance here, here, but ultimate target is going to be 62 for new month. So Franco Nevada, this one, the same price action like a GDX, take out this high coming down. So this can go to here, 168. Gold Barrick, 2% up today. So <clears throat> pretty nice getting to this supply area. We have got another supply area and we have got a sharp sell off here. So $24, I should say that's going to be the ultimate level. So here is the point. So yeah, 24.21. The next one is going to be here, somewhere around 22.18. And the next one is going to be here as well. So 21.20. So these are the targets for gold barrack. And I believe this one can outperform um, um, the gold miners as well. This is pretty good stock, to be honest. Uh, moving on to um, energy stocks, which was mixed today. So uh, 
XOP, which is oil and gas exploration ETF. This one goes down here, sharp sell off. Buyers didn't recommit back, so there are lots of support here. So we'll see if it holds up pretty well. The price action here, the chart is not that strong. So let me tell you this. So this is not a strong. We see a series of uh, higher low. Uh, sorry, uh, lower high, lower high, lower high, and then we are testing this area. So if this one break out to the downside, I should say this one goes all the way to here, so and, or even here. So we'll see, but uh, lots of uh, support is coming back here. So this is kind of like very, very nice consolidation. We tested here, we tested above this. So this area, lots of buyers, 108 to 112, lots of buyers. OIH, a positive day today. So it's kind of gain a bit, uh, buyers coming back. And uh, well, uh, there is a small divergence here between these two, but this needs to be deeper and deeper to see a better divergence. We'll see how it goes. XOM, which is Exxon. Um, this one after failing this consolidation coming down. So Exxon, I believe if this one goes down below this, which has been tested once, this can go down to here and that would be great buying opportunity. Chevron 39, uh, 61 cents down. Um, going back to this wide range bar, let me just uh, clean this. Going back to this wide range bar, needs to hold up pretty well, otherwise it's going to go down. Oxy, which we bowed again today. So we bowed a small position again in Oxy, and uh, I'm just uh, looking for more uh, support is coming. This one is in top information, or it's going to be a, just a pullback. So I believe this is can go another hike to the upside 73 to 74 we'll see how it goes but if oxy gets there i'm gonna just sell my position i'm not gonna be greedy on this but this is one of the best among the other in um energy stocks rig the offshore plant this one goes off pretty nice like four percent upside 26 cents up so rig needs to take out this pivotal point and this flag if this one goes up this can go all the way up to $9 and then $12 in a row. So we'll see how it goes. Tomorrow will be NFP and also weekly candle will be closed. Pretty important day for the market in overall. Pretty choppy last two, three weeks. So if you remember, I just told you uh, these two, three weeks, it's going to be choppy. And we are going to just nail the bottom again for the next rally. So NFV, NFV data tomorrow and weekly analysis tomorrow as well. So have a fantastic evening. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.